Hi, it's Bridget. Welcome to Above Life Channel. The purpose here is to inspire your spirit and to fill you with hope. And we do that every week with weekly channeling videos. This week's guest is a returning, a returning interview. He's a great and very popular interviewee. And if you like the conversation, go ahead and check out the playlist because he's got his own here his own playlist at Above Life Channel. We're gonna be talking with one of my favorite spirit friends. He is such an incredible guide and has been such a soulful encourager for me on my path the past few years, and that is Prince. Did you know that that's actually his real name? For those of you who aren't mega fans, and believe me, I, my fan background began with Prince in the afterlife and him as a guide, as a spiritual um, energy. That's where I began connecting, even though I've lived in Minnesota, yes, the purple state my entire life. And I've been known to jam to some Prince tunes. I'm not a mega fan. If you want that backstory, go ahead and check out the purplemedium.com website. That's my website where I have a blog that talks about my journey and um, my relationship with Prince and how we got to know each other through the afterlife contact communication and channeling that I've done with him for the past few years. So go check that out, the purplemedium.com blog, and it'll fill you in. So like I said, Prince is actually his real name. His real name is Prince Rogers Nelson, and he was born and raised here in the beautiful state and the chilly state of Minnesota. So Prince, come on in. He is a great spirit friend of mine. We kind of have this um, brother-sister kind of vibe, I guess you might say, but he gives me a hard time. He likes to, um, he has kind of a sharp wit, uh, Minnesota sense of humor, sarcasm <laughs> and such. And sometimes it's hard to know if he's teasing or not because his facial expressions, he seems so serious. And then all of a sudden he'll crack a smile and say, oh no, just, I'm just kidding, <laughs> I'm kidding. So. I hope you can feel the energy of Prince as he comes closer here. He says, ah, oh, they can feel me. They should be able to feel me, he says. They should feel me. So you have something you want to talk about, he says. You have a specific topic. I do, I do, thank you. <laughs> Trying to keep me on task, huh? He's definitely uh, bossy and uh, focused on work. Great work ethic, all right? He's like, bossy, where'd that come from? He says, I haven't even said anything yet. <laughs> we haven't even connected very much yet. Uh, I thought I would start out with the, the truth, you know, the truth. So everybody knows that you are bossy and that's okay. I'm okay with that. I'm down, I'm down with that. <laughs> All right, so the topic, are, <laughs> you guys, this is like how life is for me. I will be sitting here, I'm at my kitchen table all of my work is spread out, projects I'm working on, um, um, writing that I'm doing, uh, just uh, all sorts of stuff, calendars, retreat planning, everything spread out, right? And I'm here with my, um, just all of my stuff. It's just a mess. If you could, if I turn this camera on, you'd be like, whoa, Bridget, messy. Yeah, messy creative. I certainly am. And <laughs> So this is normal. And so then he'll like chat with me, like as I'm working on st such uh, things, planning things, where should I spend my energy? Where should I focus my time even throughout my day? Like if it's time for me to take a break and go for a walk, walk on the treadmill, do some stretching or eat something healthy, you know, get some greens in me, then um, he'll remind me. I mean, or, or not, he kind of is really the one that helps me stay focused on work. Some of my other spirit guides help remind me to take breaks, but this is what, this is what it's like for me. This is like normal, <laughs> normal life, <laughs> a day in the life. All right, so the topic though, so we have a topic, focus, focus, pressure, focus. I have so much creating to do today, I love it. Ugh. The topic is spirit guides. We're going to talk to him and ask about spirit guides. I would love to hear your take on helping us as human people in human bodies with a spirit, we all have spirit within us, help us to understand what is a spirit guide? What's a spirit guide? He's kind of like this. So this is how he's kind of sitting. He says, you know, the answer, that, answer to that is not that simple because it means different things to different people. It really depends on your belief system and what you currently 
are are seeing as spiritual and in the context of your belief system. All right, so I've heard that response before when I've asked other spirit to comment on spirit guides that it is, it is a bit um, subjective based upon how our mind can, is it our mind projecting or is it our mind receiving? He says it's both, it's, it's a duality that you have to manage when you have a, when you have a brain. He says there's, there's pros and cons to having a brain, you know. <laughs> yes, he says you need it. It's like a car without an engine, you need the engine to go. Mm -hmm. And the engine's complicated for some people to figure out, isn't it? Yes, especially if you're not a mechanic like me. So if you're not a psychic and you're not a, a in tune with energy at a way that you understand it deeply, then the same kind of concept can be applied to the mind, like understanding how we're processing information, because that's really what thoughts are, right? And our belief systems are created by our life experience thus far, and anything that we might be holding or bringing in, we brought as baggage, as carry-on luggage <laughs> into this lifetime. All right, so it's based on our, how we perceive it and what we can believe in our mind. So can you talk about, um, so, well, some of these questions I don't really seem relevant, but is spirit guide a person? He says, depends. That depends on you. That's up to you. That's up to you. So talk about that. What do you mean it's up to us? Will you create it? It's, it's the way you create it to be. That's how it is. It is the way it is because you create it to be that way. Okay. I can see this is going to be like pulling teeth, my friends. Actually, this is exactly how the conversations go with Prince. He's, he can be very deep and philosophical while um, also being kind of sarcastic, funny, and humorous. So we'll see how it goes, right? But he always tells it to me straight, and he leaves it to us to interpret, which is great because that's the point. We have to learn and grow. That's why we're having this conversation about spirit guides. All right, so it's up to us if we have a person. So I personally like variety, so I have a variety of different types of spiritual helpers. I don't have one spirit guide. I have many spirits that guide me. So spirit guide isn't necessarily a person unless we choose it to be a person. He says, no, no, no. they're not people. They're not, that's a misunderstanding. He's like, no, that's a misunderstanding. They're not people, they're not people. They may show as a person in a form so that your mind won't block it for you. Your mind won't create a barrier to knowing that you have a guide energy, a guidance, how do you say that? A guidance energy. He says, I know, I know it's difficult to uh, process this, but in terms of spirit, energy, everything is energy. It's not, there's no form. There really is no form that's created by your mind. And there's a common understanding that's created to help you to be able to interact with the energy of what you're calling spirit guide. It's really a, it's not so much a title. It's not so much a identity. It's a, it's a way of communication. Spirit guide It's more of a way of communication, communicating is what he's saying. It's a way of communicating. Okay. Thank you. So he just switched there. Did you guys feel that? So, Right away, we're communicating as people. He's taking on a form. This is perfect. Great example. A form and communicating in a way that you and I can relate to him as we can relate to what we think of when we think of Prince as a person, Prince Rogers Nelson as the person, as the, the music icon, as the, um, the performer and such. And he, and so we're having this dialogue and then all of a sudden, as soon as we got into this broader energy understanding, which is beyond the mind, it's more vast than the brain can understand it. But yet we're trying to give words so that the mind doesn't prohibit or inhibit your contact connection and understanding. So your spiritual growth related to energy and energy is communication. And the, the, he just shifted, though, in the way he was sharing with me. He was talking clairaudiently. And then he shifted into 
this space kind of it kind of went up and down a little bit and then it's here for me so it's like a knowing energy so it's like a give you a box of information um or it's a mailbox and you open it up and there's a bunch of letters in there and you open up the letters and here's all the information so did you feel that how it shifted this is great because this is a wonderful opportunity for you to see and understand how different psychics and mediums channel and how we can a psychic and medium any person you can channel in different ways how you receive communication contact information in very various ways there's not just one way there's not just one cell phone carrier here when it comes to spirit talk all right so thank you for that that was great so spirit guide as prince is bringing forward the concept for us to understand in a broader and a broader context is about guidance it's about communication spirit guide means communicate okay communicate he says that was very good he says that was very good that was a very good explanation thank you he likes to drink tea i'm gonna say that i know that about you i know that about you because i've been to paisley park and i've been on tour with groups of some of you uh, the last two years and uh, for retreats that I've hosted that I host every year I host one for sure in the fall so watch for that if you're interested in it at the purple medium uh, dot com or on Facebook anyway uh, getting back to focus 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 uh, you like tea I know that I'm having some tea too myself to tea as well so I appreciate that yeah in fact, you got me into the ginger tea. I was not a big fan of ginger, you guys. The last time I ate, had ginger was when I was like pregnant. And I tried to eat, drink, have like ginger lollipop things because I was puking my guts out. Some of you know, right? Puking your guts out. And I've had four babies, so uh, I, always, I always had the morning the sickness. And for most of the day, for uh, like three out of four. So not fun. But... Uh, so I kind of was turned off by the concept of ginger, <laughs> which I know is very healthy for you. I understand some of you that are healthy people are like screaming at the, the video going, ah, ginger is so good for you. And, but Prince likes it with green tea and there's a little bit of ginger in it. And I, and I know that. And so I went and bought tea after I had tea at Paisley Park Studios after the tour. And it was so good. And it was really hard to find the exact tea. So I bought a, a couple of different kinds and I had been experimenting. It took me about three months to figure out which one was the closest to, to what you had. And so um, now I have a little bit of, I have two different kinds. I have a jasmine green tea and I have a, a ginger green tea. And I like both of them very much So. So what does that have to do with spirit guide? <laughs> Being healthy has everything to do with spirit guide. You gotta keep your body in, in, in its form or you can't connect. You're not gonna be any good to anybody. All right, so give us more insight. So what if, so you brought up the topic of communication when we're talking about spirit guide. I know that we have lots of spiritual helpers, not just one, many kind of energies. And you brought in this concept of communication. So how do we, connect or contact are the spirits that we maybe have known in the past, like um, our grandparents or um, uh, an aunt that passed away or whatever it might, whoever it might be, or how do we connect with you in the afterlife? How do we connect with, you know, archangels and find out, like, uh, contact this our spirit team how do we do that now I as Bridget I, I, I teach about this I talk about this in my small groups but how Prince how do we give us some insight can you give us some give us some help with some of that teach us a wise one <laughs> he says you think you're gonna flatter me and I'm gonna be able to respond and give you some kind of an answer that you could do something with he says not likely Hmm. You do have to take care of yourself. She she was not um, she was not off about that. You've got to take care of yourself so that you can recognize when something is different, and when you recognize the difference and the energy and the vibration that's around you, the way things feel, that's how you know you've made a connection. Okay, so talk more about that. 
Well, you start it. You start it off. You start the call. You dial the phone. You make a request. And, oh, he's showing me some things now. I see stuff clairvoyantly. So we connected clairaudiently with Prince in the beginning, and then we collected, connected clairsentient, sentiently with sensing, feeling his energy, and knowing claircognizance is knowing. And then also now clairvoyant, he's showing me, he's showing me the metaphor of um, old school kind of days. I don't know if people do this now, maybe they do. Dial in, like call into a radio station and put in a request. Maybe you text your request now for, for a specific song to be played, but it's like that. It's like that. He says, it's like that. It's like that. Like you make a request and then you wait. He says, you gotta be, gotta be a little patient. And he says, humans, you know, people are not good at that. He says, um, he says, that's not a dig. He says, I was like, I, I was a person too. I was human too. He says, I was human too. I don't like to wait either, but you put in your request and then you, you wait, you gotta be patient. He says, but once you start getting in the habit, he's showing me like the habit, like, like healthy eating habits is what he's showing me actually, but he's just showing me it as a metaphor. But he says, once you get in the habit of calling in, making the request and being in tune, being present to hear it, to hear the message, the song on the radio, to hear the message, then it becomes normal. Like it becomes routine. He's like, you gotta create the habit. So you've gotta ask, you gotta make, he says, I say ask, he says request, you have to request communication, request a message. And then you have to be present and in tune to receive it, that's his context, in tune. He says you have to be in tune to receive it. And you gotta be there, you know, present. So in tune and present. So you make the request, get in tune and be present. That's how you receive Contact communication from your spiritual team. That's how you know you're connecting with your spirit helpers, the spirits that are helping you, guiding you. So you, would you say spirit guide? If that's what you want to call it, that's what you want to call it. Well, we could use a symbol for that. Do you have any ideas? <laughs> Joke for Prince fans. He said, then he shows me, then I see clairvoyantly a big third eye, which is the chakra energy center of the body that's right in the middle of the forehead. A big third eye and a pyramid. <laughs> okay. Wisdom. Connection. All right. All right. So we have to create a routine. We have to just do it. Um, you know, some of us are really stubborn and it's hard to kind of break through and really believe that this could work for us. So are there any other signs or things that we should be aware of to help us receive more? He says, your biggest, your biggest problem is your body. That's what he says. Your biggest problem is your body. He says, Bridget, you know this. You know this. You know this for yourself. You know this. You could talk to them about this. I know I could. Um, but they, we want to talk to you, Prince. All right, so the biggest problem is our body. Go on. Can you expand on that? Your vibration is heavy based upon what you are taking in, whether it's energy of emotions, of relationships, toxic relationships, addictions, whether you are poisoning your body with food or other substances whether that stream of light that is flowing naturally, there's this flow, he's showing me like our pranic tube, which is our spine, and light just kind of pulsing and flowing like fluid in the spinal column, like spinal fluid, like just flowing, 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 but it's all light, pure light, almost looks like little streams of really super skinny ribbon of light, just beautiful and kind of flowing and really fluid, like almost in water like that. And he says, this is natural, this is your natural state. But the physical body creates, um, I like to use the word resistance. Is there a better word? He says blocks. Just say, tell them the body blocks. It sabotages, but it's not, it's trying to keep you safe, but it's misinformed. 
because the communication can't come in and flow freely. And those lights, he says those lights that, those light strands, they almost look like little skinny licorices. Like if you've ever seen like Twizzlers and you un, like con, they're all twisted up and you untwist them and there's licorice ropes that are really skinny. That's what it looks like, you guys, but it's like a white, kind of glowing iridescent white, you know? And it, do, it feels really fluid, like gentle and pretty, pretty kind of. Um, all right, so he says that, that part of you is natural, that part of you is, is given, that part of you is the energy of spirit that flows, the spirit energy, the spirit contact communication, that's the communication channels. And your body blocks, he says it, it creates blocks to what, to acknowledging that? creates blocks to allowing that to expand. So the light inside of you that's moving up and down your spinal column connects in through, does it connect actually through the chakras? He says it can, it's like if, you know, it's stop, it can stop at the chakras. The chakras could be a, a receiving point or a um, kind of like a bus stop is what it looks like, a train stop. You can stop there and then like a platform, get off, get on, receive, release, you know, travel the information up and down inside energetically to our bodies. But our bodies are our biggest blocks, our body blocks, because it's misinformed, right? So how do we get around that? He says, pay attention to what you put in your body and what you are taking in around you in your relationships. He said, environment isn't accurate, it's relationship. The relationships create the environment that you're in energetically, whether it's emotionally, spiritually, whether it's helpful to you or harmful to you, it creates the environment. This information is the information, my interpretation for what he's giving. It's not his words exactly verbatim. I'm gonna tell you that. Again, like a clear cognizance, a knowing, sharing a knowing, an intuitive sharing a knowing, okay? So we're still channeling, but you're seeing different types of channeling, same channel. Prince Rogers Nelson, is giving us this information. So, all right, the body's a block. I know that myself too, and you're right. You, you mentioned it a little bit in the last two years, I've really been working on allowing my body to get into the best vibration that supports me to allow more of my light, those little licorice light things, to be more um, able to transport, transfer energy, information, communication, content, and to keep my vibration positive, light, um, uh, eager, eager to expand and grow and to allow the energy in the natural flow state, whatever it is. If I have a time when I'm really open to learning, then I allow myself to shift focus and focus on the learning, make room for that. If it's a time where I need to do some clearing because I've had done a lot of work and I've had a lot of healing sessions with clients or clearing sessions where, I need to make sure, because it's kind of like I just exercised a ton is what energy does. Energy can uplift you, get you really you know, eh, excited and stuff, but you also need rest time as well. And it can also bring you down so that it can slow you down so that you can be aware of some of the blocks and the barriers, the resistance that are already inside of you that aren't being put up to keep out spiritual context and information, but that are naturally just part of being a person. It's not because there's a problem with you. It's not that one time back in fifth grade when you were teased, it's not that. That's not what I'm talking about. That's not what he's referring to. He's referring to your physical, tangible body and how energetically, um, how you are in wellness, wellness terms energetically. Do you have energy wellness? And your body is the place to make sure that you're not having blocks and barriers. And it's really true, and I know this because a couple of years ago when I started really paying attention to what I was eating, how I was eating, and how it affected me when I was doing my channeling work or my psychic work, and it, a great deal, how caffeine affected me, how sugar affected me, how you know um, processed foods affected me, and then also, too, energy, like meditations and different types of meditations depending upon who who is doing the meditation um, what is best in alignment with where my energy was at in order to allow it to be as well and healthy as it could possibly be and that's different all the time sometimes it's a Deepak Chopra meditation sometimes it's a Kenji Kumara meditation sometimes it's a meditation I have done <laughs> that I've recorded so that for others that I use for myself sometimes it's a 
um, Alton Camden meditation. So, I mean, there's a lot of different different kinds of energetic meditations that I can connect to, but I know that about myself because why? Because I had opportunity to practice and to notice how my energy respond, responds in, in regard to that. And so that's kind of what he's chatting about here is that it is important to take, to know, to know your body and how it processes energy. Energy is information. And if you want to connect with your spirit guides, your spiritual team, or do other spiritual communication, you've got to be an optimal energetic form. And it does take some pay, pay attention and it takes some, some ritual or practice around taking care of the body in a way that it doesn't create blocks or barriers. So heavier energy is created by heavier foods and by relationships that, uh, that are imbalanced or unhealthy for you. And how do you manage that? If you're inputting too much and there's not a balancing of energy for your own self, energetically, it's gonna affect you. So, I mean, you guys know this, I think. I'm sure you know this, but I guess it's important. He says, we gotta hit it home. Let's hit it home. Okay. Is there anything else you wanna say about spirit guidance or spiritual communication or contact? He says, what, what else do you wanna know? He's showing me a variety of tools that there's a lot of different ways you can contact and connect with your spirit guides. Um, I mentioned meditation, um, visualizations work, um, and he says um, dream state, dreams. You totally connect in dreams, you guys. It's really easy, it's not hard. You can do it and it might not make sense to you in your brain, but you can connect and have contact. It's an energetic exchange, not a literal exchange. It's not literal. Spirit stuff is not literal. Stop trying to make it literal. Stop trying to make it factual or specific. It's not. It's fluid, flexible, co-creative. It's open. It's unique. It's customized, which are all good things. It's all about that freedom of expression, right? Freedom of expression, freedom to receive. Receive how you please. There you go. All right. Um, he says, but there are other aids like um, scents, incense, candles, whatever feels good to you and can get your energy, get your body into a place where it's calm enough so you can receive information. That's the biggest thing. He's like, um, so you can't receive it when you're really anxious or worried. It doesn't work. It, it can't. That's a block. That's a body block that's created by emotion, but it's held in the body. It's a body block. It doesn't mean they can't get through, though. I want to be clear. I want to say that. He says, oh, yeah, anything. He says, well, anything's possible. You know, anything truly, it really is possible. He says, anything's possible. Um, so I don't want people to think that, oh, I'm too worried or, oh, I'm depressed, so they won't, I won't be able to contact or communicate. No, you can. If you have a desire to do it, then you need to, um, I kind of want to say prove it then. Prove that you have a desire to do it. Prove it. How do you prove it? How do you prove that you have the desire to connect with your spiritual helpers and your healing team? You show up. Show up. Don't just sit on the couch and go, oh, I can't do it. Because you know what? Then you won't do it. It's a self-fulfilling prophecy. You've got to co-create the experience, which means you've got to be a creator too. So you've got to prove it. Prove your desire to connect and start practicing some things that will help you to get connected. Take care of the body. Recognize the body and the way energetically you're feeling and how energy is flowing for you. And then maybe implement some new tools like different kinds of meditations, or maybe you do toning or sound healing. Listen to some sound singing bowls on YouTube to get your energy in a state that you could connect. Or maybe you finally go to a counselor and talk about some of the emotions and the things that you've had pent up. Or maybe you go to a healer. Maybe you go to a person that does body work, either massage or cranial sacral therapy, or maybe you get some acupuncture or acupressure. There are so many options, but you are the one that's gonna have to actually show, prove, show up, and try some of those things. If, you, that, if that's your desire, if that's what you really want, there are so many options and opportunities. You can use crystals, you can use um, oil, essential oils. You can use so many things to get the body involved in the process so that you can be calm, so that then you can connect. There's so many options. So do it, just do it. 
All right, so what do we say here at Above Life Channel? Seriously, Prince, I don't even know if I should share this. This one is like really Bridget casual, and I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how they're going to receive that. We'll see. We'll see. You guys will have to tell me how you feel about this. I'm sure you will in the comments. <laughs> this, it's different with Prince because I just know we're so casual. Like we have these conversations all the time. I just don't always record them. So let's remind you. So you are watching Above Life Channel. There are additional... Uh, conversations and much deeper channels with Prince in the Afterlife on the playlist. So check out the playlist here at Above Life Channel. And remember that if you want to be part of receiving notification for the weekly channeling videos, you can actually subscribe. There's a little bell icon. You got to click that so you can be subscribed. Every week I share a new, at least one new original channeling video where we talk to someone, a spirit in the afterlife. And so that's what this has been. But this has been a topic focused one with Prince. We've talked about spirit guides, spirit guidance. And then he talked a lot about energy and how our bodies um, are part of the process for our spiritual connection and contact. Thank you for that. I really do. That was really, it's pretty deep, but that's how he is. These are the conversations we have. So that's Prince in the afterlife. That's how I know him. This is how I know him energetically. So hmm. thank you for being here. I appreciate it. And thank you for watching. <sighs> Remember at Above Life Channel, the purpose here is to inspire your spirit, to, to fill you up with hope because the purpose is this is your life. Like, this is your life, so live it. The purpose is to live it. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching.